Hi everyone, Amy Astro here with a new Pix and Sight tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to create a mosaic. Back in September, I had a few clear nights in a row, so I decided to tackle a mosaic of the Andromeda Galaxy. You know, that beautiful daughter who is chained to a rock by her father, all because her mother Cassiopeia liked to brag how beautiful Andromeda was. Pretty much like most mothers I know. Cassiopeia was so bold as to say she was more beautiful than the nymphs, the daughters of the sea goddess Nereus. Back then, Nereus and Poseidon had a thing going on, and there was a good chance one of the nymphs was his daughter. Well, we all know Daddy's not going to like having someone else saying their daughter was more beautiful than his daughter. Do you feel the great tragedy here? So Poseidon sent a sea monster, Cetus, to ravage Andromeda as divine punishment. Cepheus, Andromeda's father, feared for his kingdom, so he chained his daughter to a rock as sacrifice to spare his kingdom. Like most stories here, there has to be a hero. So along comes Perseus and his magical winged horse Pegasus to save Andromeda. Aww. Well, I can say Andromeda's galaxy is one beautiful galaxy, and it is the first target most astrophotographers chase. So let's go ahead and get started. We're over here in Pix and Sight, and as you can see on my screen, I have two images for Andromeda. I have a left and a right. Both images are RGB, and they were taken on a monochrome camera over several nights. These images have all been fully calibrated and processed and merged down into individual images. So now I've only got one image for the left and one for the right. Now the goal here is to get both of them together as a single image. And let me show you how easy this process really is. But I'm going to call it easy, but I'll be honest with you, it took me several days to figure out the method to the madness here. So. First thing we need to do is we need to create a template file for these two images to register to. And we're going to do that by using the star alignment. So I need to grab one of these images and let's go ahead and grab this one on the left side and say OK. And I'm going to have it match up to this one over here. And we need to do change the registration model to thin plate splines, and this is a new option in this current version. It's called something else in other versions. I will do some distortion correction. In this working mode here, I need to change it to register union mosaic. And I will have it generate a mask just to take a look at it and do some frame adaptation. I won't do anything with target images, format, output, star detection, but I will go ahead and take the star matching ransack all the way up to eight. That just guarantees that they have some kind of match going on. And I will say OK and let this run and create us a template. And this step will take probably three or four minutes to occur. All right, so we're back. That took about three and a half minutes to process. Let's go ahead and close out our star alignment. And what we've got here is our mask. And I'll make it a little bit larger so you can see here. So basically, this is just the mask that shows me where each image lines up with each other. And I just minimize this. I don't really use it for anything. But this is going to be my template file. And let's go ahead and give it a good stretch and take a look at it. All right, so this is our template image here. You can see right here is where my overlay is. That is my 20% that I had given myself in Sequence Generator Pro. You'll see I've got a really harsh line here, but that's okay. This is just a template. It is a quick and dirty merge, and its sole purpose is for us to align our images to it. Okay, so right now it is called the mosaic. And I'll minimize this guy right here. 
Now the next step is to register each one of these images to our new mosaic. And we go back to our star alignment again. All right, we go back to our star alignment and let's give it a reset. And we're gonna change these options up just a little bit. This time our view file is going to be our mosaic that we just created and say okay there. And we are gonna use, again, the thin plate spline. We'll go ahead and have the distortion. And let's see, registration match images. We'll leave this one exactly the way it is for default. We'll generate the mask and the frame adaptation, and I don't want any drizzle going on. And let's see. We'll also go down to matching. I'll bump this all the way up. And that's about it for settings. So what I need to do now is I will do a new instance for each one of these images. So let's go ahead and process this one. And this will take another three or four minutes to occur. And when it's done processing, I will drag a new instance over to this other image. All right, so here we go. We've got our first one registered. Let's move the mask aside and let's take a look at this. All right, so we have the left side Andromeda is now registered to the main template. And now we just have to register the right side. So we will set this one aside. And all we have to do now is take the exact same settings we had before and grab another new instance and drag it over to this side and let go. So now that we know what settings we need, this really is not a very difficult process to do. It's just time consuming. I don't have to do a lot, but my computer is really working hard. So when you're doing this, just plan on it taking some time and take this opportunity to go do something else. All right, so now our right side has been registered to the template. So now we need to take both of these images that we have just registered and we will need to do a file save as to them so that we can get them in a directory. And I've already saved these, so I'll show you what we've got going on next. Now that these two files have been saved, the final step that you have to go through is called this gradient merge mosaic. And it's in the process pull down menu. And you go add the files, and these are the two registered files that you just saved. I'll say add, and I will go get the, go grab them. And type of combination we want to do is called overlay. Alright, now the default settings, they don't always work that well, but I'll show you real quick at these default image default settings what the image looked like. And I've got one here processed already. Alright, this is the first image that I processed using the default settings. And you can see where I've got my overlay going on between the two images, which is my 20%. They are blended rather nicely, but there's a couple problem areas and you always want to zoom in on the seam of where these images get put together. And let me show you what you're looking for. You are looking for these pinched stars, these artifacts, where there's a bright star right on the seam that's being taken over. And let's see, there's another one down here. See? And we don't really want to have those in our images. So the quickest way to get rid of them, if we're lucky, this, doesn't, this is not foolproof, but for this image, if we take and we increase our shrink radius, I'll just bump it up to, let's say, 7, 8. And let's take our feather radius up to about 60. And when I process it, what it does by feathering it is it adds a gradient between the two layers that's not as harsh as it was before. Before it was back there at 10, so it only took about 10 pixels or so worth of a gradient, and that created the pinched effect. By me bumping this up to 60, 
I'm going to show you the finished image here so you don't have to wait because these running these took about 20 minutes each. All right, let's see. There's the pinched one. And let's find my good one here. Move him out of the way. All right, so this is what I got with updating that number to 60. So zoom in. This is one of those days when I think I am choking the computer. All right, let's zoom in on that seam and see if we've got anything pinched going on. There we go. You know, you've got a little something right there, but these areas right here, they are so minor that they will actually work out in post-processing without having any problem at all. It's whenever you have a star that suddenly starts looking like an hourglass, that's when you have to worry about it. And I'm sure in the future we'll have another video with an image that actually does that, and I'll show you how to work through that also. But this image is actually quite good. And from here, I would just continue on with my normal processing. I would do a background neutralization, color calibration, do some noise reduction, some saturation, some curves just your normal uh, processing until it's done. So really it just took three steps to create a mosaic. You create a template for everything to register to, you register it, and then you merge it into a mosaic. One, two, three. So that's what I've got for you today. This is our mosaic as we started. And this is the mosaic as I was finished with it in Pics and Sight. So thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you like this video, please hit like below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that alert bell so you know when I upload new astro-related material. I appreciate all of y'all. And until next time, I am wishing you all some very clear skies.